up. So, here's what I'm thinking. I thought I might make a wee video about the Irish folk. I thought we could have a, a wee drama whiskey. All right. That was the uh, worst effort I've ever done on trying to do an Irish accent. But here I am in Ireland, and while I'm wasting uh, my time waiting for my colleagues to finish up their tour of the Guinness Brewery and the Jamison's uh, Distillery, I thought I would uh, record a little video. And I thought you know, I'm going to actually do two videos, but the first one uh, I'm going to do is going to be focused more on <coughs> Waterloo 200. I wanted to talk about it because I had an, I've had an interesting ex experience with the game, and I think that it's. Uh, let me just get closer to you. Is it uh, I've had an interesting experience with the game. I've played three partial games solo, two or three, maybe even four sessions opposed, and I just played two games with the designer. And I had very different experiences with all of those uh, sessions. And I think the the underlying thing that I wanted to get at is that when a game is different, it's very easy for us to, <clears throat> I think, to be dismissive of it or get frustrated with it or, uh, you know, say it's broken, you know, the old, it's broken. Uh, or it's unbalanced, or the one side can never win, or whatever the case might be. And right now, I know there's a couple of guys who are uh, trying to get their head around the game and are uh, posting to the designer and to other folks, and are so far wrong with how the rules are being read. And I think that's a language translation issue. You know, they're European and they're they're just so far off base that you kind of got to almost discount their opinion because they're not even playing the game correctly. And that's one of the, that's the first point I wanted to make is that it's important for us to focus on getting the rules right in the first instance and for the rule book to be accurate and clearly worded so that when a player and a rule book come together there's clarity. And that was one of the things that I struggled with a little bit with Waterloo 200. Uh, for all that it's just 10 pages of rules, there is this uh, tendency for information to be kind of scattered around the rule book a little bit and for some rules to seem to potentially upset other rules. But <clears throat> the interesting thing that happened when I played the designer, and the first time we played it was very... Uh, you know, very careful and thoughtful game. And I didn't question any of the rules. I didn't have any rules issues. I didn't ask any questions about the rules. But one or two things that we actually were one or two things that I I went, oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, so that so that was nice. Or perhaps it was something I'd forgotten. I don't know. Anyway, the f so the first game we played... So rules clarity is important and you taking the time to learn the rules correctly is important before you go jumping off the deep end and being upset about the game. And I had very vocal issues but with Emanuele uh, directly in private email and on Board Game Geek and uh, because I really felt like he did uh, put the game out too quickly and didn't go through another, at least one more revision of the rules that probably would have picked up a lot of, a lot of things. Um, you because know, he sent me a play test kit and I, it took me you know two or three weeks to get to it and then I started goofing around with it and by that time you know he's decided to publish the game so there's a level of impatience with him that's a little frustrating uh, so that's that's an important thing for, for me to deal with that I just got to deal with that that's the way he rolls he wants to get the game out he thinks it's great and it all works for him but it may not necessarily work for me that said, when we played, so let's talk about the second thing that was interesting about this game, is that it played so well. It was so interesting and so tense and so uh, um, thought provoking. We we had a lot of fun playing. Uh, you know, we played till two o'clock in the morning at one point, 
uh, and we've been out for dinner and drinks and all that sort of stuff. And we'd play for an hour or so, uh, two hours prior to that. So it was a long game. It was full. We went, you know, uh, two or three activations into the fourth turn. And there was a lot of thinking going on because it was a very, very tense and very tight game. Uh, although I was well behind because he'd taken Papalette and he had killed six uh, British you know, allied units and really was kind of forcing me into a corner. But um, as uh, as he brought reinforcements on and I brought some reinforcements on, uh, you know, the tide turned a little bit. I got to start to get the Prussians in. And so the game, the game started to, the game went the distance. Uh, it was a savage, rapid defeat at a very critical moment in the game for the French. And I, you know, I snatched uh, four or five kills like that. Just uh, I I'd slowly worn down units, and then boom, everything kind of fell apart for him, and uh, the game was over. Papalet was uh, recovered, and I won eleven killed 11 units to nine so very very close game and it was an excellent experience the second game we played we turn around i think we played uh germany at war next uh the next day or that, that afternoon and then we played another game of waterloo and this time i was a lot more freer with the british i was not as careful and i overextended myself and you know the game was over and first turn pretty much you know he wiped out a bunch of guys and I counterattacked and I think uh it was nowhere near as enjoyable and I think uh I think there's a tendency when you play the game that if you don't if you don't adopt somewhat of the mentality of the generals that you're going to have a hard time if you are the british and you try and you know counterattack too early or push too soon or uh, you you uh, you are too rash, or you don't reinforce. You know, swap units in and out of combats. Uh, you're not going to have fun as the British, and you're going to find that the French will win every time. But I think if you play the British as perhaps Wellington did uh, with his forces, that was cautiously and conservatively until the Prussians arrived, you're going to have a great experience, and it's going to be really hard for the French to win. Uh, so it's a matter of mentality and it's also a matter of, of timing and of bringing the right units from the right cause together to attack the right units at the right time. And it, it became, a, so it was a wonderful contrast to see same two players playing the same game, having a completely different experience. And we both walked away and said, you know, that just wasn't anywhere near as much fun as the first game. And and eighty five percent of that the reason for that was my play style in the second game because I wanted to experiment with something, um, and he also chose this time when we played he played the French again he chose to give me the initiative disc and take reinforcements the very first uh, activation, in which I then also took reinforcements and then he went again and took reinforcements, so. Uh, we had a lot of units on the board, and it just it, it just wasn't as much fun. For that reason, and for some other reasons as well, but just in general, we played we played very differently. Uh, but I think we were equally matched from a skill perspective uh, in the first match and in the second match. I, I you know I just didn't play well, so it ended ended too fast. So the game, uh, what I'm telling you about the game is. If you're interested in the Battle of Waterloo, if you like block games, even if you don't like block games, I think you could play this with its uh, hidden movement characteristics. If you like, and if you like strategy games and thought-provoking games, then this is a game you should have a look at. Uh, after after playing now and playing it correctly I would gladly pull it out and play with a novice gamer I think it's a game that's very thought provoking for folks and there's really nothing you need to learn it's a really straightforward game um, and you kind of go at it from there I, I, so what I'm telling you is it, it really is a fantastic game and it's quite enjoyable 
uh, and uh, I think it's got a lot of replay value in it. It's some, something I think you could probably, I mean, if you probably get a good uh, 10 or 12 plays out of that game before you start to get to the point where perhaps you'd mastered one side, uh, the difference is going to be you playing somebody else and, and helping them learn to master the game while you play with them. And then when you've both mastered it, I think it becomes a very, very, very challenging game, a uh, very interesting game. So I wanted to share that with you. And I'm going to cut the video uh, here because it's about 11 minutes long. So, uh, and then we'll talk about Germany at war and contrast that to uh, uh, Waterloo 200. All right. Now, here's the good, just and the, to wrap up, here's the interesting news about Waterloo is that uh, the other three battles uh, around uh, that conflict will be uh, probably be made uh, by Vento Nuovo games as well. So I think there'd be a nice series of, of battles around those, uh, uh, sorry, uh, games, a series of games around this system, which really makes really makes me happy. So good job. Talk to you soon. Adios.